G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and natural disasters is probably something most of us have personal experience with. I myself was in Cyclone Tracy as a young boy, and remember the horror of Christmas Eve 1974 when it hit Darwin, destroying the city. But what about a pandemic? A disease that's easily spread with the potential to wipe out millions of people. Not many of us have been through that, but if it happened, those of us with food gardens are going to be better off than those who don't. Let's get into it. To be real, not many of us, including me, can possibly know what a major pandemic might look like or how devastating it might be on humanity. Nevertheless, we do have information available in a historic sense, some from recent events still happening now, and we've probably seen enough apocalyptic films to have an idea of what we could expect in a pandemic situation. Common sense tells me that a pandemic won't necessarily be put your face mask on, and it's business as usual, nah, I think it's gonna be much worse than that. And I also think without going over the top that we should be prepared for a time when the human race comes under attack from an outbreak of disease, albeit man-made or otherwise. Since the end of World War II, 75 years ago, we have not experienced a global crisis affecting most people. But whilst another world war is a possibility, my hunch is that a pandemic is more probable. The world population has tripled from 2.5 billion 70 years ago to nearly 8 billion today. And just like pigs in a pen, the more you crowd in, the more chance of disease. Is this nature's way of culling the human population? I don't know about that. Maybe. But what I do know is that with globalization and this many people on the planet, improvements in technology, especially transport, communicable diseases can spread faster than any other time in history. If, or some experts say when a pandemic hits, the first thing that happens in the general population is panic. And that's when they all go out and start buying up basic necessities and hoarding them. With a backyard food garden, your necessity list is less than those who don't grow at least some of their own food. What I mean by that is when the manure hits the fan, we won't need as much canned or packaged food. So we can use our precious time, money and extra space stocking up on non-perishable necessities. Things like toilet paper, medications, batteries, fuel, bottled water, water filters or sterilisation and natural preserves like salt and sugar. I suppose some rice and flour wouldn't hurt either. After the last minute stock up and depending on whether there's an enforced lockdown or not, Having a sustainable fresh food source at home means less exposure to the dangers of disease or contamination because you don't have to travel out in public as much. I imagine in a pandemic, money will only get you so far, especially in the short term if goods and services are virtually non-existent due to the lack of resources from collapsing supply chains. Suddenly money isn't worth the paper it's written on. And if you're in Australia and use plastic money, you can't even use it for kindling. However, food or swapping of goods becomes very valuable indeed. Growing food locally has a huge advantage of requiring minimal transportation and when the lines of communication are cut or tightly controlled, local becomes king. Being self-sufficient in something enables you to offer your neighbours produce in return for goods you might not have or are running short of. And at the very least, you are contributing to your community, just like the Victory Gardens in World War II, when governments urged their citizens to grow vegetables at home to help combat food shortages. Sure, you can stock up on canned and packaged food, and it could last for years, but there's a good reason why people don't eat out of a can or a packet every day. And that's because fresh really is best. Fresh food has more nutrients, better nutrients, and often tastes better and is utilized better by our gut and body than most canned or processed foods. It's just a fact. A good example I can give you of personal experience is in my army days when you used to have to eat canned food, 
for weeks, sometimes months on end, out in the field or on operations. Yes, you can survive on canned foods, but not only does it get boring real quick, it also slowly wears you down physically because of the limited variation in diet and the lack of micronutrients the complicated human body requires to function at full capacity. After several weeks of eating canned and processed food, you begin to crave a fresh meal made with whole ingredients recently harvested with limited processing. It's not that your body is missing an empty stomach, what it's missing are the nutrients and nutritional value it can only get from fresh food. And in the time of a pandemic, fresh food is going to be hard to come across. The other thing is canned food takes up space and goes out of date, so even the most prepared prepper may well find their food supply isn't adequate, let alone the everyday organised person or family who has a decent stacked pantry which isn't going to cut it more than a few weeks. Of course, the hardcore prepper, God bless their little camouflage socks, and the well-organised will still be better off than those who are dependent on takeaway food, eating out, minimalist lifestyle, apartment living. But then, that's just the millennials, and who cares about them? I'm only joking. In a major pandemic, I'd want to be me, not putting tickets on myself, but to have a flourishing fruit and veg garden, plus a few ducks and chickens for eggs is a clear advantage over a city-centric, apartment-dwelling, Uber-eating, Tesla-driving, polo-wearing trendite. And I'm not necessarily talking about the end of the world. I don't think that's going to happen at all. I think the likely scenario will be a known virus breakout that incompetent governments and authorities try to control, but it ends up breaking through, causing maximum disruption to the world. I doubt it will lead to widespread anarchy, maybe in some places. However, I think the rule of law and governance will remain in place. It's just that the normal way of life will be severely impacted, similar to a world war or possibly worse. Millions or maybe billions of people will suffer hard times for many months until the disease outbreak is brought under control through either a vaccine and or really tough quarantine measures. Not only will the supply lines be damaged leaving the shopping centre shelves empty, but people might find themselves confined to their property for extended periods under martial law to stop the spread of disease. Perhaps only emergency workers or authorities will be allowed to travel around the community. It sure would be awful to be cooped up in an apartment, living off rations dished out by the authorities for an unknown period of time, but it sure is a possibility for some. Even in this situation, a few containers on a balcony or sunny windowsill, growing some herbs, salad crops or microgreens would be a tremendous help in flavouring bland packaged foods and or getting some fresh produce into the body to increase nutrition and reduce stress. Having said that, I'd rather be me again, out of the city with some space to carry on with a little normality and plenty of fresh food, including starches like potatoes and corn for myself and my family to eat. Anyway, that's food for thought, isn't it? Let's hope we don't get hit by a major pandemic anytime soon. But if you were in a major pandemic, would you be able to ride it out? Or would you have to live off baked beans and bunghole for several months at a time? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, give it a big pandemic thumbs up. One last thing. I did an interview with the boys from Changer Studio the other day on their channel, Creator Generation. You might be interested in watching or listening to it, especially if you are considering becoming a YouTuber yourself or just want to know a little bit more about my journey so far. My throat was a little dry during that interview because I'd been digging a big hole earlier in the day to bury a kangaroo. And my explanation of why I did that is in the description below. When you click on that, it'll take you to that video and you can find out the story. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.